Hey man, you ever looking to flatter? Okay, this isn't just about visibility and uh, distortion. It's also about uh, loss of information. Uh, we're at the point of convergence um, due to this distortion. Um, I sped this part up two times as fast uh, only to kind of get to the, the bow part. Uh, but it, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, the light rays. Um, Capuscular rays are pretty interesting, especially when you see them shooting all the way across from one horizon to the next with anti-capuscular rays uh, winding up on the opposite horizon. Um, and I've got uh, quite a few videos of that. Um, a couple of them I've posted, some of them I haven't. Um, of course, if I tried to uh, post most of the videos, observations that I've done, um, oh my God, I would have way more uh videos out there that i would have had to upload it um but i keep a lot of the stuff for my own personal research but you know that's uh again for my own advantage uh, because i know what i'm looking at um, i do a lot of comparisons and i also go back through my videos quite a bit um, to review them and to also look for the finer details and right here is uh i mean with my naked eye all I can see is two little dots of a boat out there. Um, and of course, as I zoom in, not only can you see the boats, but you can actually see the water uh, from the boats being splashed up from the bow. Um, now, these are uh, fairly good sized boats. Um, they're not huge ships. Of course, I'm not in a shipping area where I can uh, view a lot of big, huge ships. Uh, but these are good sized uh, shrimp boats and crab boats. Um, some of them are 40, 50 feet long. Um, some might even be longer. I, I noticed that in a couple of my videos. I got some really um, much larger boats out there. Um, but also, if you notice, there's not a lot of compression going on uh, in these. And the visibility is good. There's not, uh, there's very, very little mirroring. Um, and if there is any mirroring, it's way back off in the distance. But one of the other things is, is the reason why I don't think I'm getting the mirroring is it was very, very calm near shore. Um, the wind where I was at, the wind was being uh, uh, blocked out by some of the trees and uh, where I'm located. Um, this was taken from the Bayport Fishing Pier, or not from the pier, but from the, the picnic area at the pier. Um, the, the pier has been down for two years now from one of the hurricanes they promised to have it fixed uh, and it's been way way uh, into two years now and they are not even planning on fixing it I guess um, so the people that go there to fish aren't very happy uh, but you can see as I pull back how the water calms down closer to the shore I get um, and it even gets calmer uh, you can see these calm spots out there and how much they out will actually mirror the sky. But this is the reason why I don't think I'm getting a lot of mirroring is because farther out in the water where the wind is picking up, it's got higher waves. These higher waves are going to block out things in the distance. Now, a lot of globe people, you know, uh, deny this occurs, but it's very easily uh, shown that, you know, these waves do block out the boat. I mean, just look at the wake of that littler boat um, blocking out the back end of it. Um, so waves and wakes can block out boats. Um, that right there was a Hernando Beach uh, marker. 
This one here is uh, Billy Steele's. Billy Steele's is uh, seven to eight miles away. I think it was 7.78 miles. Um, now my camera height is about 10 feet. Uh, and that's being very, very generous. It was a lower tide. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm being very generous with the 10 feet. Um, now I'm up on the seawall, but my tripod is not all the way up. It's at the halfway marker. Um, I was sitting in a chair doing these. Um, only because I, I didn't want to stand there, you know, standing up with the tripod all the way up. Um, also, when it's all the way down at the 28-inch mark, um, it's a little hard, more harder for me to see it because then I've got the sun glaring in my viewing window and uh, makes it a little more difficult. These are the, the boats that you saw in the beginning. Um, and here's, look at this little sign that's, that's miles out there. Now, this sign is way past these boats. As you see, the boats go past this sign. Uh, you'll see the sign vanish. So, how is this sign? I mean, you know, they want to say it's being refracted up. Um, I don't think so. If anything, um, the whole horizon is being pulled down to me at this point. Because um, when I take uh, comparison to some pictures that I took at a lower perspective, I mean, a much lower perspective, about 28 inches off the water, um, I could see the water going well beyond. Um, the bird racks, um, and I think uh, somebody's seen them. I'm going to have to put together a video one day where um, I use a little bit of footage from a bunch of uh, videos that I've done to show some comparisons and to show you what I'm talking about. Um, also, too, as I get closer to where the sun is uh, blaring its light on the water, you'll notice that um, you know this is a camera function that. Uh, you know, when I get to this uh, area, how the screen will actually darken up. Um, I think it's uh, it's just the way the cameras are built. They're built to where they will protect themselves. Um, and, and I'm just making this assumption. I'm not positively sure why it does. But as I zoom in closer, of course, I can see a little bit. But you can actually see the light reflecting off of anything reflective off of that boat. Which, think about that object. Um, the light reflects off of it. It distorts that object. Um, to where you really can't see it. Um, in its true uh, nature. Um, also, at the edge of the water and the sky. Everything is, uh, information is going to get lost. Like here, when you look at this boat. There are certain portions of the boat that are vanished. That you really cannot hardly see. Um, this is due to the light distorting the object and not allowing you to actually see it. It also has to do with uh, the heat, um, heat distortion, uh, atmospheric distortion, atmosplanic distortion, if you want to say uh, atmosplane. Uh, atmosphere I use just because everybody's, uh, you know, more knowledgeable on what it means. Um, so, you know, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying that... Uh, you know, we live on a globe, definitely saying that we live on a flat surface with a lot of humps and bumps and valleys and uh, mountains on it. Um, B. Gady made a video uh, really just putting us flat earthers down, uh, making fun of us, which that's fine. He can make all the fun he wants because I make fun of his rope theory because if everything's spinning and twisting around the earth, then his little magnetic rope theory would get all tangled up and we would have one big ass knot out there in space. Fake space, that is. But as you watch this boat um, get close to the Bayport Rack, now the Bayport Rack is uh, approximately 3.5 miles away from me. And people, you know, will always say, oh, that boat's just going. You know, it's just right behind this rack. No, these are, this boat's miles behind this rack. And the reason I can tell is because uh, uh, there's another rack to the right. Um, and it's, uh, uh, this is the Bayport entrance rack right here. Um, so, you know, when I say the Bayport rack, I just know it and call it as the Bayport rack. But it's actually um, called the Bayport entrance rack. Um, and then there's a rack to the right of it. 
um, that's actually called the Bay, Bayport North Rack. Now that Bayport North Rack is again uh, approximately eight miles away. And this is going by Google, Google Earth's um, references and also by the reference of Fernando County uh, utilities that are you know, they, they have a site where you can go to for Hernando County. Now, this is the Bayport Rack. Also, look at the signs that are out there. These signs should be well underneath the curvature of Earth because these signs don't even stick up 10 feet. Uh, the rack is sticking up about 16 feet. Um, I think these uh, signs are about 8 foot up out of the water. Um, 9 foot, maybe 10 foot on a low tide. So, yeah, they, they could be 10 feet up on a low tide. But when you, you know, you look at them, they're only about half the size of the Bayport or the North Rack. Um, so I'm assuming they're about eight feet. Uh, might not be even that um, on a high, low tide. I mean, it might be eight feet on a low tide, less on a high tide. And obviously, as this uh, boat gets to that rack, um, you'll see that it's not very far from the rack. Why? Why do I say that? Because of the perspective height of the boat, perspective height of the rack. Um, this boat's probably about 12 feet above the water. Um, and when he goes in front of this rack, you'll be able to see that he's approximately about 12 feet. So he's real close to that rack. What I need to do is go over there to the um, area where they launch these boats or where a lot of these crab boats and shrimp boats are parked at. Um, Hernando Beach uh, Bay, boat ramp uh, is where a lot of these uh, boats actually park their vessels and they take off from there. As you notice, uh, it, it is in front of the rack, but he's really close to that rack. He's not very far away from it. Maybe he's a few hundred yards, uh, but he's real close to it. Again, um, later on uh, in the next part of the video, which I might put on this, um, I zoom back to this because uh, uh, somebody was asking me about my camera. I told him, uh, you know, it has 125 times zoom, and then I show him the boat or I zoom in on the boat, that particular boat, because I wanted to find it again. Um, and it's even smaller yet, so it's well past uh, the eight mile mark when I zoom in on it again. And I will add that to this video. Um, but you can actually see how far this boat is out away. Um, especially behind this post, you know, pretty much blocks it completely out. Not completely, but almost. And that's perspective for you folks. That's perspective. Smaller the, I mean, the smaller that object gets, the further away it gets. All right, again, I sped this part up uh, two times as fast. Um, now, this sign right here, I film also from Pine Island. And when I do, it looks like it's right next to the Bayport Rack. But obviously, it is not. It's just due to perspective, the different angle that I'm uh, filming from. Puts it almost right in front of the rack, uh, right beside the rack. Uh, but that's just perspective again for you. It's not really there. It's it's a couple hundred yards away from the Bayport rack. Again, uh, you know, I follow this boat for a little bit, um, and then I do decide I'm gonna, you know, uh, just film the horizon. But then after a while, I start thinking, well, you know, if I'm just gonna do this uh, on a day of good visibility, and I've done it plenty of times. Um, again here, look how smooth that water has gotten right there in front of me. Um, also, you see that the, the light's being blocked out by the cloud that's out there. Um, but I'm going to put up some of the original audio here shortly um, just to show you um, where a guy comes up and he's talking to me, um, you know, asking me you know, a little bit about my camera. I actually had a funny looking umbrella. That had a fan in it and uh, a water mister in it too. So I guess you could mist yourself with a fan blowing on you through the umbrella. It's a good little device, uh, especially for Florida where it's hot and humid here. 
a um, little cool water spraying on you um, with a fan. Uh, Got to be better than being blasted by this sun that we get here and the humidity that we get. Um, but the scenery is absolutely gorgeous this evening, um, as you'll see here shortly. I'm not going to put the complete footage in because I've actually already run past uh, the amount of time that I, I wanted to um, make this. But again, uh, I'm going to leave some of the natural audio on so you can hear um, what this gentleman's talking about. And it's going to be coming up here shortly. So I'm going to cut my audio off right here and let the natural audio go on. Sunset to be found, you'll be here. Yep. Yep. I've seen your little. Yeah, that's our newest one. Yeah, it's better than uh, you're thinking a bird peed on you. You got the mister. Yeah. That's pretty with all the reflection coming off the water. Never one the same. What do you do with your shots? Make, make frames on them and stuff? Or just reflection? I watch them on my computer. I got a big screen that I throw them up on. and Excellent. It's tied in with my computer. <laughs> Something's been breaking. I know it's breaking the water. Yeah, probably some snook up in here or some redfish. It's too big of a... That was at Pine Island on high tide on Monday. Pretty much like in the later part of the morning, and I actually saw por porpoise out there. Yeah, yeah. I get them way out there. I mean, <laughs> let's see if I can find that boat again. <laughs> Do you see this one? <laughs> it's 125 times zoom. Wow. Yeah, it's zooming over the curvature of the earth, actually. Wow. <laughs> He's about seven, eight miles. Yeah. He was out by uh, uh, the north uh, Bayport rack. Um, which is about eight miles from here. He might be further now. <laughs> 